I also would like to say uh, a welcome to everyone from President Watanabe and our Secretary General, Nicholas Bompane. And we'll have uh, presentations by the Rhythmic Technical Committee President, Noha Shabana. We'll also have the athletes representative, Siana Vasileva, with a presentation as well. So again, from the FIG office and staff, especially from our sports manager for Rhythmic Gymnastics, Sylvie, uh, Sylvie Martinet. Sylvie is always working in the background to do anything to be helpful uh, with Rhythmic Gymnastics and move the discipline forward. So Sylvie, thank you as well for setting up this uh, webinar and for all the work that you do. Um, I'll pass the microphone now to Noha. Noha, it's all yours. Steve, thank you. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. I'm so happy to be with you. As a rhythmic discipline, like Steve explained, the first time for athletes webinar. This idea came from our athlete representative, Stiana Vasileva, so we have to thank her for bringing new ideas, new era for the rhythmic gymnastics community, and I believe it will continue on all this energy. Today, we are not talking about the code of points. We here are with you. Who are we? What's the technical committee? What's FIG technical committee? What's our duties? What's our objectives for the athletes? So first, let me introduce the rhythmic team in the FIG. I myself is the TC president. I'm newly elected as a president. I was a member for three cycles in the FIG. I have with me the first vice president, Isabel Sawade. She was also elected and previously there. I also have second vice president with us in the technical committee, Mrs. Maria Petrova and Mrs. Natalia Bolanova, Mrs. Marcia Aversani, Mrs. Marie Moltoba, Mrs. Lubov Sharkashina, who was the previous athlete representative and now she's a member of the technical committee. And our athlete representative, Siana, with us, you can see her. So her photo is not on the screen. All the technical committee members are saying hi and thank you for taking this opportunity to be with us today. Our uh, big, big, big person in the FIG who works always 24 hours with us is Sylvie Martinet. She is the sports manager. So we would like also to thank her all her efforts because she is the one behind the scene. What does the technical committee role of the technical committee functions in all the FIG disciplines? So for Rhythmic, we deal with all the technical questions, any technical thing concerning administration, management, development of the sport. We draft to the executive committee a tech relative to our sport, our needs. So this has to be approved by the executive committee to deal with competitions and to develop their respective code of points. So we work to do the code of points, but we don't do it alone. We seven or eight persons, no. We consult coaches, we consult athletes, and uh, we had pre previously a webinar for artistry. We had a commission for artistry for several years, working with the media, with the uh, television, uh, with all the previous Olympic champions. So to give us their views, see, to come better in the code of points. To make decisions about formations, appointments, suspension, removals of judges during the competition, to control the activities of judges within the technical regulations and the code of points. So we control the judges' work to ensure that under the executive committee, 
the technical regulations are properly done for technical organizations of the youth Olympic Games, World Championships, World Cups, Challenge Cups. So this can be also a pre-preparation. So the technical committee members can also be involved in the pre of the events. To make decisions of any technical matters of urgency, but we have to report it again to the executive committee. So you see, we have a hierarchy. We have president of the FIG, the vice president, executive committee members, the technical committee. So we are working in hierarchy in FIG. We report to someone to speak about this Olympic motto. It reads faster, higher, stronger, together. A gymnast alone cannot work without her coach, without her national federation, without the judge, without the FIG. So the gymnasts wants to become faster and develop more fast. The coach is the one supporting her for that. So she makes her higher in the level. This is the coach's role, to make higher levels. The judge becomes stronger and stronger every day by education. But together, all of us, we conclude the Olympic motto. What's our objective as TC? The new TC, the new era of the TC. We want rhythmic gymnastics, ethics, transparency. This is very, very important for us to have transparency. Fair play for everyone. The image of rhythmic gymnastics around the world, around other sports. We have to have our sport in the highest level. We have to attract more media, more sponsors for our beautiful athletes. Information availability for everyone. We have information available for everyone. We don't block the information. Like now, this is a webinar for everyone, for the athletes. On Friday, we have another webinar for the coaches. We are opening the doors to give educational material for coaches and judges. The most important we want to work on is to have a clear code of point for everyone for the spectators, for the media, for the gymnasts, for the public, for everyone to have a clear code of point. We're doing this step by step and we will reach it together. We're looking for beauty, artistry, finesse of a gymnast. By having those, we are spreading and developing the rhythmic gymnastics in many countries. And we want to have a high goal, high expectations of different medalists, different countries in each apparatus. Our dream is to have apparatus finals in the Olympic Games. And by having, spreading the level of high countries in the sport, I believe one day we will reach this. Fair play is an important motto for us, it's an important objective. It's a virtue of rule adherence, whereby players and athletes abide by the rules of the competition. It is also a commitment to consent in a good spirit and encourages a good attitude towards sport that includes Respect, modesty, generosity, and friendship. And this is very important, and I know happened in the World Games, a very nice fair play thing. I will not mention the names, but I will make sure that we send a nice letter to this gymnast who was generous and had the friendship with her opponent. Her opponent had a problem in the finals and she helped her. She didn't want to stop her. She didn't say, oh, she's competing against me. We are competitors. 
No, she supported her friend. And this is where we say a fair play, friendship. I looked and Googled how we can say the fair play ideals. And the main things that were taking my eyes or attracting me, we have to respect the rules on everyone. Doesn't matter which country, which gymnast, respect the rules. Respect the judges and accept their decisions. Respect your opponents. Give everyone an equal chance to participate and maintain your self-control at all times. This is called a fair play ideals. Then we have an important point we want to explain to you as an athlete. So you don't think that the judges are cheating or the technical committee is changing the scores. No, we have rules, rules that abide us, rules that governs the FIG body. And in those rules, we have how to proceed for an intervention. So procedures for all intervention, interventions of the supervisors can only be made through the presence of the superior jury, except for the inquiries. And this intervention with the block system is for World Championships, Olympic Games, Youth Olympic Games, and you can see it in the appendix to the code of points. It's there for all the disciplines, specific for rhythmic, for trampoline, for acro, for uh, mag and wag, for each discipline alone. So in case of an intervention, the president of the superior jury must contact the judges concerned and inform them of the score given by the supervisor. The judges have the choice to change the score. In case judges decide not to change their score, it's the decision of the president of superior jury. The president of the superior jury keeps a record of all the interventions and all the changes of the scores. And this is included in the report that the president reports to the executive and to the FIG. So we have intervention specific for the D-score. So the D-score intervention of the supervisors in case of an inquiry by the coach for their own gymnast. Remember, they cannot inquire on another gymnast, not from their country, only for her gymnast. And in case of deviation between the supervisor's score and the judge's D-score. And we have interventions for E-score and A-score. And in this case, when it is impossible scores. What does it mean, impossible scores? It means interventions of the supervisors for the E or A take place only in case of impossible scores. Like, example, a judge entered 9-2. Okay, her final score is 9-2. But the gymnast has a loss for one point. So mathematically calculation, she cannot give 9-2, at least 9, if the rest of the routine is completely clean and only with this drop. So mathematically, she cannot put 9-2, so the superior jury must intervene in this case. Or when obviously a judge just entered a wrong entry. 1.9 instead of 8.1 or we need the deduction and not the final score so she needs to enter not 8.1 because the final score will be 1.9 but she needs to enter the 1.9 so these are the cases where immediately the president of superior jury intervenes but where is the system block why in the World Championships or the World Games or the World uh, Olympic Games, 
we have some delays because there is a system block. This system block is made to protect the gymnasts on all levels. So for difficulty, DB and or DA, the supervisor, the superior jury who's judging this panel is lower or higher more than 0.5. So it's up and down than the score of the DB jury or the DA jury. So no one is overrated or underrated. Or the e-deduction technical faults. If the deduction of the supervisor is lower or higher by more than 0.5 point, then the deductions of the e-jury. So this is also will block automatically. It's not that we, we can or we cannot. It's automatic block. What about artistry? Artistry is more stronger here because you can have penalties from zero to one between the final deduction, for example, is 0.8 from the judges. Allowed tolerance is 0.2. So the maximum the supervisor can have a difference between the judges and the supervisors is 0.2. So her penalty can be one point. If she has 1.1, the system will block automatically. More than one point, we have the difference of 0.499. So which is, means more than 0.5, the system will block automatically. So this is just to give you an overview how we work in the World Championships, how we judge. So we have the judges panels, judging the DB, the DA, artistry execution, and we have supervisors, and then we have the president of superior jury. I want to clarify a few things because until now we can see some leotards not correct. So the transparent, the pelvic crotch area with or without the skirt should be covering with non-transparent, non-skin colored material up to the hip bones. So the examples with the green, these are good examples. The examples where there is a skin color material, not up to the hip bone, are not correct leotards. A small lace or transparent or skin colored area for connection or decoration is tolerated if the following is respected. A solid colored connection between the front and the back of the leotard is required. So the front and the back leotard is required to have a connection. The connection may be from fabric or applications. You can have application, but the impression of all pieces and separate pieces. The connection must appear at the hip bone or lower. So when you try your later on, make sure that the connection is at the hip bone. Those are examples which were not correct. The pelvic or crotch area with or without should be covered with non-transparent, non-skin colored material up to the hip bone. So this is a new example, the one that you see it on your left. You see from the sides is not correct. She must have material. She must continue the material down on the pelvic area. So the pelvic area with or without a skirt should be covered with non-transparent, non-skin colored material up to the hip bone. So all the pelvic area must be covered. The second example that we have here is a skirt that does not fall further than the pelvic area over the leotard, tights or unitard. We cannot have a long skirt like this one, almost close to her knees. It should only be not fall further than the pelvic area over the leotard. So the pelvic area and not more, not fall further than the pelvic area. The leotard must be tight fitting to enable the judges to evaluate the correct position of every part of the body. This includes also tight fitting sleeves 
Why? Because the judge needs to see every body segment. You don't want to be penalized every time because she cannot see your shoulders. She thinks they are up, but this is your big flower over here covering. Or she cannot see your elbow. So every time she's taking deductions because she thinks that you have a bent elbow. So it must be a tight fitting to enable the judges to evaluate it correctly. This is for you to know who will be in the World Championships. We will make a 30% random check. So we will not go to you and tell you, please show us an apparatus. To control that according to the FIG rules. Another random control can take place after the gymnast finishes their routine at the request of president of superior jury. So, so don't take a chance to play with an unauthorized apparatus or a leotard that is not according to the rules. Because if you play with an unauthorized apparatus, the exercise will not be evaluated. All gymnasts who would like to check their leotards, this is thank you to Sienna for her availability and she said that she can do it with pleasure, can go directly to her during podium training and she will tell you if it is yes or no. So you are possible, you are able to go to the athlete representative during world championships, during your podium training to show her whatever you want to show her, your leotards, even if you want her to check your apparatus if something happens, but she's available. Thank you to her that she will be available during all podium training. Apparatus logos and manufacturers. We that you are facing some troubles with logos. Doesn't stay with you with you four months, five months, and the logos disappear. So we have raised this issue to the apparatus commission and the apparatus responsible for uh, director and responsible in the FIG, who will take it with the manufacturers to see it, how we can do it better, that while you are working and training, this will not happen so fast. Education. Every man has education. At any point, you can ask your coaches. You can ask your judges and you can always get the information from STS. Sienna will explain you more about this. So I conclude my presentation for you. You can always approach the technical committee directly or through the athlete representative on her email. I wrote it to you so you can send her whatever you want. She's very, very secretive. She doesn't tell us who sent her. A good opportunity for us to be with you today, not speaking about the code of points, but just to give you a highlight, who is the technical committee people, who is the athletes, representative, what can we do for you? You have to know as athletes, we are always there for you. You are the jewel of our sport. And we have to be attentive to our jewels. Sienna, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Noha. Uh, great presentation. Uh, I'm so glad to, uh, to see you. I know that you're preparing uh, for the World Championships and... I very much appreciate that you find time to join uh, this webinar. It's uh, very exciting for me to hold it with you. Uh, I would like to thank Noha Bushavana, uh, the FIG Technical Committee President, for believing in my idea. Um, a big thanks to the FIG office for allowing me to do this and making this happen. And thank you for this opportunity. So on the next slides, I am going to show you what top topics we have for today. Here we go. So we have candle use during competitions. 
FIG certified apparatus, leotards and accessories, safeguarding, introduction to anti-doping, STA's education system, scholarships for athletes, social activity and meeting in Sofia. So, um, first of all, I would like to warn you all that during the World Championships in Sofia, it will be forbidden to use candle on the official carpet. So, I know that many of you use candles and nobody is forbidding you to do so. Just uh, make sure you don't do it on the official carpet. So, probably you know that I work as a coach in the Azerbaijan national team. And of course, my gymnasts use candle as well. But uh, we came up with the idea of bringing a small piece of carpet, just like here in the picture, with us during the competition. And gymnasts can do the candle on this carpet. So, um, once again, this is done just for safety reasons and so that no, no one stumbles and does not get injured and volunteers under the direction of the organizing committee will oversee this during the official trainings. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, you can always send it here in the chat or you can email me or you can contact me anytime, wherever is easiest for you. Uh, FIG certified apparatus. So uh, uh, everyone knows that starting from 2017, uh, the International Gymnastics Federation has new requirements for the apparatus with which gymnasts perform. In addition to the correct size and weight of the items, FIG approved logo is also required. And an exercise performed with a non-approved apparatus uh, will be scored zero. So after the discussion in our WhatsApp group chat, I immediately informed NOHA and technical committee about the issues you have. And as NOHA mentioned before, we are really trying to help you. But for now, we still have rules and I want you to focus on how important is it for you to uh, compete with the right apparatuses. Some of you will have apparatus check, some of you won't. So I highly recommend you to, to check uh, the apparatus is yourself before going to the competition because it will be incredibly sorry to get zero points for the routine you've been working on very hard. So on the next slide here, um, I'm going to show you how you can do it, how you can check the apparatus uh, yourself. So you go uh, to the FIG website you will see a rule section here. I marked it with the red arrow. Uh, click on it. Then you will see here apparatus norm. Then you can download it if you want, if it's easier for you, or you can just check. And on the file uh, on page 83, there will be a detailed information and description about each apparatus. You also have here the QR code. You can scan it if you want, or you can take a picture for later. Okay. And here, if uh, you want to read more about uh, the manufacturer, it's the same principles, FIG official website, section apparatus, but you choose by manufacturer here. I also marked it with the red arrow. Okay. Here, I just want to show you some good examples of how the apparatuses uh, should look, how uh, you can take a closer look uh, and see that here on these pictures, the FIG logo and the name of the manufacturer is clearly visible. So this is very important there should be both the FIG logo and the name of the manufacturer. And they should be seen 
visible clearly. Okay. And here we have bad examples. Just look at these pictures, girls. I think you see that the FIG logo and the a name of the manufacturer, they are just not visible. And also uh, be careful as some manufacturers do a difference. For example, Venturelli has junior hoops with black markings and senior hoop with pink markings. So I remember when uh, in 2017, I was competing at the moment and we had World Cup uh, held in Baku and some teams came to the competition with the junior hoops and uh, they had to buy five new hoops. So my point is, I don't want you to have this kind of issues. Therefore, this knowledge will help you to avoid mistakes. Okay. And layout arts. So uh, important, the tight bone should be covered with a dense non-transparent tissue. Accessories should fit snugly to the body and head and a penalty applies for a prohibited layout art or accessory, 03. As uh, Noha mentioned before, during the world championships, I will be there for you. If you are not sure about your layout art or apparatus or anything, you can come to me during the podium training and we can fix this together. Um, okay. Actually, Noha explained very well about this topic, so I think we should move forward. But just remember that you can check the layouters also yourself by checking that, that hip bone, if it's covered or not. And remember that if it's not, uh, if the layout is not uh, in a good uh, way, you will get zero three point penalty. Okay. And here are some good examples. <laughs> Noha explained everything to you. So we can go. This is me on the pictures. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions still, don't be shy to ask. Okay. Here is a safeguarding topic. And it's very important for you to know that at the World Championships in Sofia, I will be a safeguarding officer. Uh, I was invited by the FIG and you will probably get more information when you arrive in Sofia. But I want you to know that not only during the competition, but if you have any concerns or if something is bothering you, you can always call me, text me. And I want you to know that you can trust me completely. So I have attached here the 10 golden rules of gymnastics. I really hope you've seen them before and have them in your gym. But if not, here is the chance to take a closer look. I really like them. So let's see together. The 10 golden rules of gymnastics is an awareness campaign reflecting the strong desire within the gymnastics community to ensure a safe and respectful environment in the sport. Although mentalities cannot be changed overnight and with magic wand, building a positive culture in sport is everyone's business. First, I do gymnastics for fun. I listen to my body. I pursue my own dreams, not someone else. I know that I will have good days and tough days. I balance my passion for gymnastics with other big goals in my life. My health is more important than medals. I have the right to be respected as I am. I have the right to express myself freely, be heard and be treated fairly. I understand and respect the roles of the people around me. I act with fairness and integrity. So I really like them and I hope you, you have them in your gym and you look at them it's very important. Okay, we move to the introduction to anti-doping. Um, 
Anti-doping education is very important these days. You all know that many competitions require you to complete a course and receive a certificate. As a professional athlete, you must follow all updates regarding doping and always contact and discuss any drugs. I also uh, leave here the official WADA website where you can find information about doping that interests you. Save it to yourself. It's very important to follow the updates. And I also want you to know that I am a member of the Amada Athletes Advisory Commission. It's like WADA, uh, but in Azerbaijan. Therefore, you can contact me if you need any advice or help. Okay. This is very interesting topic, I think, for you. There is now an interactive program for studying gymnastics, the official FIG gymnastics interactive program for artistic, rhythmic, trampoline, acrobatic, and aerobic gymnastics. With this tool, judges, coaches, gymnasts worldwide have access to videos, practice quizzes, and analyses offering them common study materials to prepare for their tests or to train before all competitions for which they are retained. So perhaps you didn't know that you, as a gymnast, can also have access to this platform. I believe that it will be very useful for you to register. The more you are informed and educated, the better your results will be. If uh, you understand and uh, the code of points and the rules from judges side you start to grow as an athlete and you begin to demand more from yourself so i'm sure that uh, this will help you make your compositions even clearer and more professional so here is all the information you need about the website it costs four dollars per month you see the links so Save them, take a picture, it will definitely help you. Okay. We move on to the scholarship for athletes. And um, this is our positive topic. <laughs> if you have any problems with funding to practice professionally, and your federation cannot help you, you can contact the FIG Foundation for Solidarity through your federation. Each year, no more than three gymnasts from each discipline will receive assistance from FIG. A federation may propose one gymnast per discipline and a maximum of three candidates total. Uh, assistance for of the scholarship grants is the responsibility of the FIG Foundation for Solidarity based upon the proposal of a special commission designed by the FIG Presidential Commission. You need to ask your federation to request a scholarship for you, fill out and send some certain forms, and after I mentioned above, a decision will be made on this issue. So, most importantly, you must remember that uh, this can only be done through your federation. You can talk to the representatives of your federation about this and then they can write an official letter to the FIG, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, social activity. Girls. We will see each other in less than two weeks during the biggest event of this year, World Championships. I understand that this competition is very important for you and you all work hard to achieve your goals. I know that, um, I know that you are going to be concentrated on your trainings and I completely support you. But I also think that we share the same opinion. Rhythmic gymnastics should be more popular around the world. And to do so, uh, this, we, we need to be more socially active. It's very important to support each other and make friends. You know that professional sport ends, but uh, 
our useful habits, our strong character, our, our strong character remains forever. Therefore, in order for more people to know about us, we must give interviews. We need to participate in shows. Uh, we can give master class, uh, travel to each other for friendly meeting and so on. Girls, you're the most beautiful and graceful athletes. The world should know about you. I really believe and hope um, I believe and hope that all together we will do everything so that more people around the world will know about our sport. Be active, be open, and never be afraid of criticism and always move forward. I wish you all good luck in life and in competitions. So here are my contacts, my Instagram page, my email, and... I want you to know that I am always av available for you. And finally, uh, finally, I hope that this presentation today was useful for you and you learned some new things from it. But as I just mentioned, we will see each other very soon. Uh, we will have meeting there in person and I have prepared for you a questionnaire about the current code of points and I know that we can talk about it and we will talk about it after the competition. And I would really appreciate if you tell me what other topics you would like to discuss. Contact me anytime. Also, if you would like to join our group or chat in WhatsApp, you can contact me, of course, and you're always welcome. Okay, so if you still have any questions about the presentation, you can send them to my email. Here it is. And uh, I want to say a big thank uh, to all of you for attending this meeting. I really enjoyed hosting this webinar for you before the World Championship. I think it's very important. And thank you very much. Uh, just remember that each of you is unique and can be the best version of yourself. And I'm here and always to, uh, ready to help you with this. I am very, very much looking forward to see you mm, to our meeting in Sofia and see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Siana. Thank you. Thank you, very interesting presentation, very informative for them and it's really a problem we have to do. so um, I would like to thank the FIG authorities the president the secretary general Steve the technical coordinator who gave us the possibility to do this webinar with the athletes it's a first step and we will continue to be always together thank you on behalf of the technical committee all of them are saying hello to you and thank you from myself for having so much attendees. We just have a two questions on the chat room. I will answer them before we go. The recorded webinar. Yes, it is a recorded webinar and the FIG um, team office will launch it not only to who registered to this webinar, but to who didn't also. So it will be on a YouTube link on the FIG uh, after five, 10 days maximum. So yes, it will be available for everyone who couldn't join us can still get the information and please pass the information to your colleagues or friends who couldn't leave work or who had training or who was in summer vacation. So let's pass the information. About the apparatus, I'm sorry that your logo was out in one. You can send us your receipt and immediately it when you have something like this, like an issue like this, to the FIG office, to Sylvie Martinet, where she will take it to the commission, apparition, because if if you bought it in one week and you have a receipt and you can prove and 
contact them to to do uh, but right now we follow the rules what we have in hand we know it's expensive apparatus and we will proceed more to help you with apparatus and manufacturers so we have a question about the accessory parts so Sian, you explain again about the accessory parts so about the accessories they should fit tightly to your uh, head so you can use them no problem but they just should fit tightly uh, if you still have questions you can send them to my email you can send the picture if you're not sure about any accessories or so on you can send me and we can check together but the accessory part is very easy you, you just have to stick help to the head tightly so what we mean is you have to look beautiful yes not something over your forehead not something outside of the head not uh, some flurry things covering on your head just look beautiful neat and tight to your bun we want you beautiful on the carpet so this is it because gymnasts you are beautiful the way you are just like this with your uh, leotards with your apparatuses and you are doing everything great and just try to be elegant and beautiful the way you are so another question is regarding the skin color on leotards. The illustrating picture does have skin color below hip bone, but is marked as allowed. While on the second picture, the left picture also has skin color and forbidden. What is the main difference between the two? The main difference is that they'll have material connecting the hip bone. So blue one that you saw was marked correctly because it was like a triangle skin color, triangle skin color. So the triangle of the material was below the hip bone, while the others did not have anything to the hip bone. Was not there was no connection at all to the hip bone. If you lose your accessories, do you have penalty? No, you don't have a penalty if you lose your accessories on the floor. What is the eligibility of the scholarship and the criteria? Siana, you want to answer this question for them? Uh, yes, I would say that you just have to take a closer look at the FIG website. There is all the information you need about this because uh, I don't want to tell you something that it's not completely true. So you can go to the website and there is all the information you need. Please tell me about the training during the competition. It often happens that not all gymnasts adhere to the schedule and train at the wrong time. Now we will follow the schedule and we will train correctly and nobody's allowed to enter within a specific time in the World Championships. So it will be strictly written with the program. We're making sure that everybody gets the same exact hours of training. Nobody will have extra training in the hall or come earlier than the others. Siana, this is a question for you. How to correctly wrap the hoop around the logo? Leave it transparent. Yes, this is right. So our gymnasts, my gymnasts, they're doing the same way you said. We just leave it transparent and we just wrap the other hoop. So we wrap uh, all okay. around this logo. Are and the lighting standards in the hall? They said another question for you, Sienna. Are there lighting standards in the hall? Yes, there are. Yes, this, it's not light. It's normal. Lighting. This is, a, 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 it's not dark. It's normal lighting. The World Championship will be in Sofia this year. One more. Why we can't use candle on the carpet? Okay, Sienna, you have explained it. Let me explain it to them. Okay. <laughs> because you are ruining the, the carpet from the organizers. 
you are marking where you want the candle for yourself, but another gymnast can be injured because it's dangerous for another gymnast just to slip where you marked your place for yourself. But as Sienna explained, we're not prohibiting it completely for you. You can do it, but outside, another piece of the candle and put for yourself on, but not carpet where the competition is taking part to protect the organizers because we want to have more and more for competitions, they cannot buy, buy year and protect our athletes. If an athlete is sure that during her performance, the air conditioner was on, what should I do? We have standards for lighting and standards for the air conditioning. And uh, our FIG office staff always control this during world championships. And they always uh, follow the, the rules uh, that governs the temperature and the lighting. There is one last question we can take. If I put clubs tape and the logo is now hidden, but they gave me stickers of the Fig and Sasaki logo, this is not allowed. Should I put them? And also there will be a penalty. Stickers are not allowed. Fake stickers are not allowed. You need to show the original logo. about the fake. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure being with you. Thank you for your time and for being with us. And uh, thank you to the technical committee members who are there also with us and uh, listened and shared with us their opinions. So this presentation is on behalf of the whole technical committee. Thank you so much and see you soon in Sofia. And if you have more questions, our athlete representative is here. She can always guide you. Yes, thank you very much from my side also. Thank you for this webinar, for this opportunity. Thank you, girl, for attending. I'm so happy to hold it here with you. And see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.